Hello, you join us here at Hassey Fen, out on the Cambridgeshire Fens. We're uh, just coming to the end of a really hot spell of, spell of weather that has been up to 40 degrees. I'm sure you've all uh, been suffering from it, but the conditions today are looking a lot better. We've had a bit of break in the weather, the pressure's dropping, and there's a bit of wind pushing in. We got here this morning, we've had a bit of a walk round, and it's a lake that I know quite well. So we've had a bit of a walk round, we've seen a few fish in a certain peg that I've fished a few times. Uh, so it's looking pretty good. The weed has come up a little bit, but it's not too bad. I know a few spots that I've fished here before, but uh, I'm going to put a mark rod out there just to check what the weed situation's like, because it can change from year to year. I always, you know, always have a good marker around, especially when the amount of weed there is out there at the moment. Uh, in terms of the lake itself, I've been a member here for about five or six years, and it's developed, you know, really well over that, that period of time. The, there's about 300, just over 300 fish, and at the right time of year, they can average over 30 pounds. So there's a lot of big fish in here. So we've got a good chance of uh, getting some, some proper lumps. There's a few fish about, and so things are looking really good. I've just had a bit of a cast around with the marker float and it's pretty weedy out there, a bit of silkweed covering it, uh, but it's presentable so I'm pretty happy with it. It's around where the fish have been showing and it's about six foot deep. One thing about Hassey Fen, it's not your normal farm reservoir. Normally you'd expect it to be a big, uh, big open bowl, but here it's actually really deep in the margins and it goes up into the middle, into a plateau, and that's where we're fishing onto. That's where all the weed gets uh, built, built up over the summer months and that's where the fish like it because it's nice and shallow. So happy with the spot. Uh, we're going to get clipped up to that, get some bait on it and get some rods out. So we're just going to have a little look at the spot mix that I've been putting out. I'm starting off with some crushed 15 mil bug in the bucket. Uh, to that, we're gonna add some of these little beauties, the eight mil bug, you can't beat these, create a really nice uh, bed of bait on the bottom of the lake. Uh, also, some of the 12 mil bug as well into that, a couple of handfuls of each one, uh, nothing too big. You'll see the spod mix I'm putting together here is designed for putting on top of that weed and so what I don't want is anything that's too big in the spod mix. It's all quite small so it's going to sit on top of the weed and not disappear into it. So we've got the crushed boilie, two sizes of whole boilie. Into that as well then we've got the crayfish mini mix. I love this uh, mix for using my solid bags but also it's great in a spod mix as well. Again very fine food items and this is really going to get into that weed and cause the fish to root around digging the weed up and helping to clear your spot. It's acting a bit like, I think of it a bit like hemp seed really, similar sort of thing, where you're getting it in, in amongst the weed and you're helping very much this bait helps to clear the spot so you can fish over it better and better as the session progresses, or even over a period of time, if you're coming back to the same swim and fishing the same spot, this is designed to help clear the area of the weed and make it more fishable. So a few handfuls of the crayfish mini mix and also it's bigger brother, the crayfish maxi mix. So again, a few ha couple of handfuls of that. Everything I'm making up here, I'm gonna I'm making up to put out in one go. So I don't really want it sitting overnight, um, you know, as it is. So I'll, I'll make up the amount that I'm gonna put out in one go uh, for later on when we go into this evening. So we've got two final ingredients to add to the mix. One of those is a tin of corn that just adds a bit of colour to things and matches those 12 mil PB pop-ups that we're putting on our rigs. So we put that in there. And then the final ingredient is the bug liquid food. And this really boosts the attraction of the mix. I use it a lot in my match fishing that I do. And I really find that when I put that into the mix, it helps to draw fish into the area even more so than just those ingredients as they are. So we're gonna pour some of that into the mix just to finish it off.
after we cleared that weed in front of the swim earlier and got some bait out, the days drifted by a little bit. I've just redone the rods again just to make sure they're weed free as we go into the evening. And as the sun's dropping, we're starting to see a few fish showing in amongst the weed beds and hopefully they're gonna come out and have a little bit of a feed on the area uh, through the night. Knowing the lake like I do, we should hopefully be due for a bite sometime during the night or in the morning. That's generally when you get bites on here. So we'll see what happens. About eight o'clock in the morning we've started to see a few fish showing in the last half an hour or so and this is generally a really good bite time on here so i was pretty confident of a bite we haven't seen anything too close to the spot but they've been in the area and just as we were sat watching a couple of fish show the right hand rod there has just dropped back and then pulled up tight and the fish has plowed off behind the spot we're fishing up to this bank of weed so it's just gone into the bank of weed behind the spot at the moment so what I'm just doing is keeping a bit of steady pressure on he's still on there I'm not giving it too much just a bit of steady pressure and the weed is just starting to give way so you don't want to really bully them in I'm not piling the pressure on but just enough to keep that tension on the line not panicking at all I can feel the fish is still on there it's just starting to come through through that weed. He tore off, I couldn't really stop him to be honest with you in the initial run. So he, uh, he sort of pulled into that bank of weed out there and that's inevitable when you're fishing like this with the amount of weed around you, you're gonna have to deal with fish that get stuck in the weed occasionally. And it's just knowing what to do in that situation. Just being patient. As I said, not bullying the fish just keeping that pressure on and hopefully it'll just start to break free. So the guys have just gone to get me a boat, very kindly, gone around in the truck. The boat's here now, so I'm just gonna put my life jacket on. Fish is still on, it's still in the weed. Um, the weed bed is slowly moving towards us, actually. I think the wind is helping push it all this way, which is working for us, but the fish is still, oh, getting tangled up. <laughs> uh, the fish is still in this big ball of weed, so it's not the sort of size that you can just wind in. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get out in the boat and see if we can free it up.
Okay, so we've just got the rods back out after we lost that fish. And about half an hour later, the middle rod's just gone off now. The fish tried to get into the weed bed behind the spot like the first one did, but managed to stop it. He's kited round to the right and just got caught on that close in weed bed. But I've come right out to the left of the swim here up on the bank, managed to just skim him round past that weed bed that we got stuck on before. So now he's actually coming in in a big ball of weed the whole fit the fish is still on um, and there's a big ball of weed coming out so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my wellies on wherever they are so yeah we've just got the fish coming in it's just under that ball of weed so it's just coming in nice and steady quite often when they come in like this when they're covered in weed they don't fight that hard which is what we want really powered off now come out of that it's just the weeds sort of come off in this sort of, the weeds all up my line again running up and down the line which isn't ideal but not much we can do about that got that weed cleared in front of the swim earlier yesterday so obviously that would have been a big issue now but luckily obviously we cleared that out beforehand knowing you know in anticipation of getting a bite so it's pretty weed free out in front of us it's just my net on the line off it goes again it's a decent fish powerful fish Two other lines out here as well, which we're trying to avoid. I'm trying to get him in here with the weed as well. Isn't ideal. I'm going in for him. And he's in. <laughs> I've had to go for my wellies. <laughs> oh, that's gold. <laughs> but the fish is in. Probably should have put my waders on. <laughs> but we're not losing a second one, that's for sure. That weed trailing behind it has picked up the other line a little bit, which hasn't helped. So, you know, it's enough, it's, it's bad enough uh, trying to avoid catch picking the, the fish up with the line, but also you've got this big ball of weed behind it. So I'm just going to unclip the rig from the fish, from, the, from my lead clip, and then I'm going to sort the line out. Under 28. Well, look at that. Just under 28 pound of Fenland mirror carp. We were uh, feeling a bit down in the dumps, to be honest with you, after that boat battle and then the lost fish. Worried we might have missed the morning feeding spell, but got the rods back out. Half an hour later, this one's just torn off. A lovely example of some of the really scaly mirror carp we've got in Hassi Fen. We're going to get this one back, get the rod back out, see if we can make the most of this morning feeding spell.
So we've just got the rods back out after having that fish and it's gone a little bit quiet so it's a convenient time just to spend a few minutes and run through the rig we've been using. This rig in particular is a spinner, that's what I've been using quite a lot recently but uh, to be honest I only started using this last year, I'm not really one to jump on bandwagons and start changing my rigs around but I couldn't ignore this one to be honest so um, it's really good for this sort of fishing for a few reasons. You'll notice there that I've got a very long hook length, well 12 inches or so and the handy thing about the spinner rig is you can tie up the top sections first of all and just keep those in your rig store and then once you figure out what you're fishing over you can then tie the boom section to exact length that you know in relation to what you're actually fishing over. So we've got a bit of light silkweed out there on the spot we found yesterday um, and so because of that I'm fishing it about 12 inches so the idea is that when the lead comes down it lands in the weed and then the hook bait is critically balanced that just sinks very slowly and just settles on top of the light weed that's out there. Got a 12 mil PB pop-up and that's with a size 6 medium curve and that setup there with the swivel is enough to just about sink the pop-up and some of the time it doesn't quite sink and that's how I want it really. What you don't want is it to put the pop-up on and then it just sinks like a stone. I'd rather have it a bit too buoyant so that uh, I can balance it out by just by cutting a little bit of the pop-up off um, with a pair of scissors to then just reduce the buoyancy so it settles down nicely and I just test that in the margin before I cast the rig out. And doing it like that means that I can put the rig exactly the right length for where we're fishing, I can get it balanced and that pop-up is sitting nice on top of the weed over our bait that we've spotted out and presented well ready for when the fish move in. I was really happy with that fish we had this morning. It's a shame we lost the one we did that I had to go out in the boat for, but these things happen. It's a weedy lake and you're going to lose the odd fish. So it's nice to get that one that we did get in and get the day off to a really good start. After that, it went a bit quiet to be honest with you. So we got a bit more bait out, seen a few fish in the weed, but nothing really else occurred on the spot. Uh, just in coming into this evening I've wound the rods in for a few hours just to rest the swim hoping that that bit of quiet time without any rods in the water is going to let the fish come out of the weed, feel a bit more comfortable and hopefully start feeding on the bait we put out. So we're hoping for a repeat of this morning, get a couple of bites before we have to pack up. So we've just come to the end of the session now and we're all packed up. Not quite the finish we were after unfortunately, but just not, as num not the number of fish down this end of the lake as there was yesterday. We've given it as long as we can, but we all need to get going now. So um, I hope you've learned a few things from the video, a few tips of, for fishing in weed. You really have seen the highs and the lows of fishing on weedy venues during this session. So hopefully there's something you can take into your own angling and good luck with it.